Hello, this is Reza from Radicat. Uh, I want to talk about the performance again in this video. This is the second video about Power BI performance. And no matter if you use it in a composite model or direct lake or import data, uh, one of the steps is to create an aggregation table, uh, aggregated table. I'm going to show you three different ways to create it, uh, which is the first step. In the next videos, we are going to talk about how to use that aggregated table. So let's jump into this video. <music> So as I explained before in the previous video, one of the uh, things that we do when we want to increase the performance of Power BI, one of the most common practices, which is also a good practice, is to create aggregated table. Let's say you have a really huge uh, fact table with billions of records, sometimes um, petabytes of data, uh, and any query from that from your visualization takes time. So one of the practices we do is to create aggregated version from that table and then use that aggregated table for our visualization. Uh, and then in Power BI use a feature called aggregation awareness so that we, uh, we tell Power BI to use the aggregated table instead of that main table. Uh, but the very first step in all of that is to create that aggregated table. I'm going to show you three different ways that we use to create the aggregated table uh, and I'll explain their differences as well. Uh, but um, in reality, it doesn't really matter which way you create it. The main purpose is to create that aggregated table. So let's jump into my uh, screen. Um, so here I have my Power BI solution, as you can see it. Um, and I have a model diagram, which is similar to what I've showed in the previous video. I highly recommend you to have a look at that previous video if you, if you are here to understand more about that performance process. If you just want to learn how to aggregate the table, you don't really need to watch the previous video. <coughs> so um, I have a sales table, which is a direct query source table. This is a table that uh, considered this is a really huge uh, database table. It's my fact table. It is connected to some dimensions such as date, promotion, customer, uh, product, things like that. So what we want to do is to create aggregated version of this. And there are three different ways that we can do that. Uh, one of the ways is using Power Query, and you can use this in Power Query in Power BI Desktop, or you use it in Power Query in Dataflow, which is what I would usually recommend, because that way you separate your ETL process um, in a, um, in a um, separate layer. And I explained that in another video, what is Dataflow, what is the difference between Power BI Dataflow versus Fabric data flow, which is data flow gen 2, uh, all of that. But the method that I'm showing to you here uh, can be used exactly in the data flows, um, exactly like this. Um, so this is Power Query, you can use it anywhere you like. So uh, this is my fact internet sales table, um, as you can see, and it has one record per transaction. What I have done is I created a sales aggregation table from this. Uh, the way that I have done it, first I've referenced this from that table. Uh, to reference a table, you can just right click on it and click on reference. This will uh, use that table as the source in this table. And I have another video exactly about the difference between reference and duplicate. Uh, with the reference, if the original table changes this, um, this table that you referenced uh, from it uh, also changes, which is what we want. So this aggregated table first created as a reference from that. Then what I have done is I actually went to the transformation and chose group by. And this is the group by settings that I have applied. Um, so in this case, in my setup, I wanted to group this data by these fields, by the order date key, customer key, product subcategory key. This means that as a result of this aggregation, I would have one record per order date per customer per product subcategory, and then I applied the aggregations in here. You cannot do that in the basic group by. Basic group by only gives you group by by one field. Advanced group by, you can group by by multiple fields, and then you add aggregations like that. You choose, for example, this is my column name. The operation is something like sum and sum of sales amount, or this is sum of unit price. For an operation such as count rows, you don't really need uh, the column because count of rows is always counting the rows in the table regardless. So this uh, setup, uh, let me also enable zooming, this setup basically is doing all the aggregation things that we need. Um, 
here it is zooming. So grouping by these three table, these three columns and adding any aggregations you want. And you can continue to keep adding aggregations. This is group by operation in Power Query. Once that is done, um, Power Query automatically detects the data type. So there's a data type change and that's it, right? This is one method of creating that uh, grouped table. I'll show you another method as well. Uh, the other method, you can use uh, DAX calculated table. Uh, so this, this table that I have created, which is another table, I'll go to the uh, table view so that you can see what this looks like. So this is the formula for this table. I'll make this slightly bigger, as big as I can. Here it is. Uh, so in this one, I'm using summarize function. Summarize or summarize columns or group by, you can use any of these functions. I have a separate video explaining about what is a DAX calculated table. It's a table that created in the memory. Um, and it is pre-calculated in Power BI. Uh, so the calculation happens at the time of refresh. I also have a video explaining what is the difference between summarize function and group by function and how you can use each of these. I have those videos as well, go and check them out. Uh, here I'm using the summarize function, DAX function, which is a function that we would use and summarize a table. So this is the table. Then we would choose what are our group by fields. In my case, these are the three fields. You can add as many as you want. And then once you have done that, you add every uh, extra column. So this would be the name of the new column. And this is the uh, aggregation for it. So the column is called sales amount. This is sum of sales amount. Or column is called unit price. This is the aggregation for that. Or column is called factors in sales underscore count. And this is the count rows to cover that. And when you run this, this creates this table for you. Uh, this is similar to creating that in Power Query from Power BI point of view. However, from um, other points of view, there might be a difference. For example, a table like this, you cannot build it in Dataflow because Dataflow is a Power Query process. So you cannot separate creation of this table outside of Power BI. It has to be done inside Power BI semantic model. And the third method I want to show you is when you have your data coming from a relational data source. Like for example, in my case here, I have uh, this data in a lake house uh, in Microsoft Fabric. Uh, my, uh, lake house is like a database, slightly different. I have a separate video explaining what is Microsoft Fabric, what is a lake house. Lake house is a, data, um, is a database structure that you can also store files in it. Uh, in my lake house, I have these three tables uh, and uh, lake house always comes with the SQL analytics endpoint, which is where you connect to this database uh, point of it. In the SQL analytics endpoint, what I have done, and I'm going to choose that, just close this one, go to the SQL analytics endpoint. Uh, in the SQL analytics endpoint, because it is like a database, you can write your SQL queries and that SQL query can be a um, a SQL query like this, which in this case, this is a group by command in SQL. So I'm saying that select these columns uh, and do these aggregations, sum of sales amounts, sum of unit price, count of the records from fact internet sales and group it by all of these. This is also creating a grouped by uh, table for me, which is exactly similar to what we have created over there. Um, you can save this as a view um, and then use that view in Power BI when you get data from it. Uh, but I would recommend to use this as a source to create a table from, and there are different ways you can do that. If this was a warehouse, you would have just uh, write insert into select from, uh, or you would have used select into functions. Uh, because it is a lake house, it's a slightly different. You can run this uh, script in a data flow, use that as a source, this script, and then load it into a table. Uh, make sure you, this is a table because especially if you are using the direct lake mode connection in Power BI, which I have again explained that in al also in another video, uh, for direct lake, SQL views would cause fallback to direct query. So make sure that you use this as a, um, as a table rather than a view. So. So I explained to you three different ways. Let's jump into this screen. So I explained to you three different ways that you can create this aggregated table. Uh, from aggregation point of view, it doesn't really matter which way you use it. Uh, it is um, 
however different from the type of use that you have. Like for example, if you create it in the lake house, in the warehouse, that is usually the best place because then you can use it anywhere else that you use that lake house or warehouse. If you create it in the power query, it is also good because then you can use that power query um, transformation inside the data flow. So then load the data into again, a lake house or a warehouse or a storage place. Uh, and then use Power BI to get data from it and anywhere else you want to use that aggregated table, you can use that too. If you use it in calculated table in DAX, it is only limited to your Power BI semantic model. Uh, performance wise, these three are also the same. So there is no difference because they, uh, all of these uh, three options, the table, the data is loaded into Power BI. Uh, but in terms of reusability, I would go for the Power Query approach or I would go for the um, SQL group by approach, especially if the performance is really important and if you have a lot of data, the SQL group by might perform uh, even slightly faster for complex group by commands, not for this simple command that I have created. So let's jump back into my screen one more time. So after you create that uh, aggregated table, the next step is to connect that table to the rest of your tables. And you see here is my aggregated table which I have created a connection to that to my dimension table, in this case, dim date, dim customer, and dim product subcategory. But when you do that, then it cause um, a specific type of a storage mode to be created, especially if you are going to do composite model, which is part direct query, part import data, then it would ask you to create dual uh, storage mode. And I explained that in another video, which is a totally different um, area to talk about, and it is a um, it is it requires explanation itself. <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, go ahead and sub subscribe into our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Microsoft Power BI and Fabric. Until the next video, bye.